In this video, I will show you what an electrical resistor is, which types of it are available, and what color codes and E-series are all about. And I will also show you what a potentiometer is and how you can use it to control the brightness of an LED, for example. My name is Andreas from the Fearless Engineer, and here we go. Resistors are one of the most common components you will find in electronics and they limit the flow of current, they divide voltage and the current flows and above all they heat up because the potential energy of charge carriers is converted into heat energy inside of them. And we have already looked at the terms current and voltage and resistance in the last video and we have also derived Ohm's law already. And in this video I am mainly focused on giving you an overview of the different designs and applications of resistors and to help you understand what the color codes and ominous E-series are all about. And also we will have a look at what a potentiometer is and how you can use it to control the current flow so that the brightness of an LED changes when you turn it. This video is mostly about theoretical aspect but since theory alone usually doesn't do much there is a follow-up video which is more of a tutorial where we look at how to use resistors in practice. And if this one here is the first of my videos you're watching you might want to know that this is part of a basic course in electronics. And in case you're interested in such things the corresponding playlist can be found on my, found on my channel and also up here in the cards. And also you can download all the learning materials, the slides and the circuit diagrams I use in my videos on my website at thefearlessengineer.com. The link is coming up now here in the banner. Oh and by the way, if you have any questions or something remains unclear to you, then just hit pause and drop me a comment. I'm happy to help you. And here we go with an overview of the component resistor. In this video we will look at how electrical resistors actually work and for this purpose we will look at how they are constructed and which variants we often find. And I will also explain to you the color code of a resistor and how they work and finally we will have a look at a special type of resistor which is called a pot potentiometer which you can use to adjust the resistance value on the fly by turning a knob for example to control the brightness of a light emitting diet. And in the next video which is a tutorial we will then look at three different ways to determine resistance values in practice. Now, there are two two main ways to look at electrical resistance in electronics. And the first way is to think of resistance as a measure of the conductivity of a circuit, which is basically the sum of all the electrical components it contains. This could be, for example, a power supply or electric motors or even your smartphone. And the second meaning of a resistor or resistance is a component that is specifically made to control current or voltage in a circuit. And for the rest of this video here, we will focus exclusively on this last type to which we refer to as a resistor. At the bottom left you can see two electrical symbols on the left side in the conventional called IEC which is mainly used in the European Union including Germany and on the right side you can see the United States symbol and in the picture on the right you can see one of the most common resistor types you will encounter in electronics. Now resistors are passive components, that means they hinder the movement of charge carriers by their structure and thereby reduce their kinetic energy. And we have already talked about the definition of current and voltage in an earlier video and we have also discussed the concept of potential and kinetic energy. And the voltage drop across a resistor serves us as a measure of how much kinetic energy is converted inside of it into heat energy. And obviously the relation between the value of a resistor between the amount of current flowing through it and the voltage drop is described by Ohm's law, which we also have discussed already in one of my earlier videos. On the circuit on the left side you can see a voltage source which is connected to two resistors of one ohm each. And in the simulation you can see that the electric potential directly after the source and before the first resistor is at a level of one volt, which is identical to the source level of course. And after the current has passed through the first resistor, the electric potential drops down to 500 millivolts, which means that the voltage drop across the resistor is one volt minus as half a volt and this therefore 500 millivolts as well. The same happens again with the second resistor and when the electrons finally arrive at the battery again there is no more potential or kinetic energy left in them. Now resistors are used in all areas of electronics and they serve a whole range of different functions. And the most important ones are shown here in the three diagrams you can see. On the left side you can see a resistor of 440 ohms which has the job to limit the current through a light emitting diode or short LED. And this is to prevent that the LED is destroyed by too much current flow. In the circuit diagram in the middle you can see two resistors like in the last diagram and their task is to divide the source voltage across themselves which is why this setup here is called a voltage divider. In the circuit diagram on the right you can see a similar situation but here the resistors are connected in parallel. And the main purpose of this circuit is to divide the current across the two branches in proportion to the resistor values. And as soon as we have studied Kirchhoff's laws in one of the next videos we will look at current and voltage dividers in much more detail. 
Now, depending on the area of application, both resistor value and its type must be selected very carefully. There are applications, for example, where it's important the, that the resistor has a high stability, whereas in other applications it has to withstand a very high voltage or a high current flow without getting destroyed. One of the most common resistor types is the so-called carbon film resistor. This is a very cheaply produced component which can be used for all kinds of applications across all areas of electronics. And in the diagram you can see its schematic structure. The small housing with the colored rings is the resistor coating and beneath it we can see the actual carbon layer which is produced with a mixture of coal dust and ceramic powder. And the coal dust is the conductor while the ceramic powder is the insulator. And the resistor itself then is connected to the actual circuit via the LEDs you can see on the left and right side. Now in summary it can be said that the carbon layer resistor is very cost effective and as one of the most common types you will find it's also well suited for low to medium power applications. You have to pay a little attention to the operating temperature though because this resistor tends to become unstable when temperatures are high and it will change its value under these circumstances making it, making it become even hotter and thus more conductive in many cases. Now another very common type of resistor is the so-called film resistor. And as you can see in the diagram below, the structure is very similar to the carbon resistor with an outer coating, the color rings and the connector legs. And the main difference here is that the ceramic body is actually an insulator in this case. And the conductive part is a thin metal film which has been cut out by a laser into a spiral pattern. And the resistance value can be adjusted by means of this pattern by varying the length of the spiral and also the thickness of its windings. Now one of the major advantages of film resistors is their low manufacturing tolerance and also the higher stability at increasing temperatures. And in addition to these two types we have discussed now there are a few more which are for example the wire resistor for high power applications as well as a semiconductor resistor which is something which we will take a closer look at in a later video. The most important information about resistors is their resistance value of course which is expressed in the unit ohms and we have already talked in another video about what exactly this value means and how it's derived from the material properties and also the shape of the resistor and in essence this value describes how strong the resistor is able to limit the current flow. Now the resistor types most frequently used in practice cover a very large value spectrum. This ranges from a few ohms on the lower end up to many millions of ohms on the upper end and according to Ohm's law a small resistor causes a large current flow and a large resistor causes a small current flow. And although the value of a resistor should be independent of the current of the, or, or voltage even, an increase in current is always accompanied by an increase in temperature. And this in practice often lowers the resistor value due to temporal changes in some of the material properties. And this effect is clearly visible in the graph below which shows the value of a film resistor plotted against voltage. And you can easily see that at higher voltages the value of the resistor has decreased significantly which results in an even stronger increase of the current flow and thus also the operating temperature. And in the upcoming video on power and energy you will see what this might lead to which in the end could be a resistor bursting into flames at 400 degrees centigrade. So in practice you always have to take care that you operate your resistor within the intended voltage and also current limits to prevent such things from happening to you. Now if you compute a resistance value for your circuit for example to build up a current divider or a voltage divider what you will get is a purely theoretical result. But as soon as you try to look for this result, let's say a 3.4 ohm resistor, you will often find that this particular one is not available in practice. And this can very well be compared to our money system where we are also not able to find a 4 cent coin in our purse, but instead we are limited to a fixed number of values with which we have to use in practice, which is 1 cent, 2 cent, 5 cent coins and so on. And a similar system basically exists for resistor values as well and this is what is called an E-series. And the idea is to divide each decade, which means 1 to 10 ohms, 10 to 100 ohms and so on into a fixed set of resistance values in between. In the E6 series for example we have the values 1, 1 1.5, 2.2, 3.3, 4.7 and 6.8 ohms and the distance between these values is essentially determined by the tolerance of the resistor which means that the less precise a resistor is in production the greater the distance to its two neighbors must be so that the values do not overlap each other. But in the picture on the bottom right what you also can see here is that sometimes the the tolerance of an E-series may be better than the theoretical values because in the case of the resistor assortment you can see in the picture which is an E12 series the tolerance of 5% is much better than the one which is allowed by the specification which would be um, up to 10%. 
Now, if the housing of a resistor is large enough, then its parameters such as resistance value and tolerance or its power rating are printed directly onto it as numerical values. But in practice, the housing is most often too small to do this, and in such cases, a code of color rings is used instead. Now, in the figure here, you can see that each ring stands for a certain piece of information. The rings are arranged left to right in the example, and the first three rings encode the resistance value in conjunction with a multiplier, and the last ring gives us the tolerance. And the resistor in the example here consists of the value values 4 and 7 multiplied by 10 to the power of 2 at a tolerance rating of 5%. So the resistor you can see here lies in the range of 4.47 kilo ohms up to 4.94 kilo ohms, including the tolerance of course. Now if you want to determine a resistor value by its color code, what you can do is you can use a resistor color table which might be a little bit slow or you can use an app on your smartphone instead. The code table is something which you can see here on the, in the slide on the bottom left and the principle is very easy to explain. For each digit you look up the numerical value for each color ring from the respective column and then you multiply the result with a power of 10 which you also get from the respective column here and also the color code gives you a value for the tolerance and sometimes also a measure for how temperature stable the resistor is. Now the big advantage of using the color code method is clearly that the resistor value can be determined reliably and quickly without the need to perform any measurements at all or even soldering the device out of a circuit board. But how measuring works is something which you need to know about and this is why we will look into it in more detail in the upcoming tutorial video. Oh, and also maybe one last thing here, a note on color codes. With most resistors the reading direction is determined by one of the outer rings. It's always read left to right and the right ring can be recognized most often by the fact that it has a larger distance to the other rings it's set a little bit apart from the others which makes it inambiguous in most cases. And finally, we will look at a special type of resistor which is called a potentiometer. And this is a component which can be used to flexibly adjust current and voltage by simply turning a little knob. And how this works can be seen in the picture on the left. The potentiometer has a total of three connectors with a contact ring between connections one and three. And the contact ring usually consists of a carbon mixture and serves as a fixed resistance over its entire circumference, which spans between terminals one and three in the diagram. Now the special feature, so to speak, of the potentiometer is the terminal two, which connects to the sliding ring and whose position on the ring can be continuously adjusted. And when a voltage is applied to the terminals one and two, a current flow is established depending on the position of the sliding contact on the ring, which determines the overall resistance of the path in between. And in the picture on the middle, you can see a typical potentiometer that you find in practice in many cases. And on the right, you can see the corresponding circuit symbol. And the sliding contact in the symbol is shown as an arrow pointing downwards onto the body of the resistor. And you can imagine it being moved freely along the width of the resistor, adjusting its overall resistance value. And in the simulation here, you can see the principle even better. On the left side is a 5 volt power supply, and in the middle you can see the potentiometer with its connections 1, 2 and 3. And the two grey boxes on the right are both voltmeters. The left one measures the voltage between terminals 2 and 3, while the right one measures the voltage over the entire length of a sliding ring, which is between the contacts 1 and 3. And in the animation you can see that the voltage between terminals 2 and 3 varies depending on the position of the contact between the maximum value of 5 volts and a minimum value of zero volts when terminal 2 moves downwards. And the voltage drop over the entire potentiometer here remains of course constant throughout the simulation because the length of the circumference doesn't change. Now in the example here you can see a brightness control for a light emitting diode. On the left side is a 12 volt power supply which is connected to a potentiometer. To its adjustable terminal a branch is connected which contains a resistor with 440 ohms as well as a light emitting diode, an LED. And in the animation you can see that the brightness of the LED varies when the sliding contact changes its position. And what's really nice about the animation here is the fact that you can actually see the current as moving yellow dots. And clearly when the resistance between ports 1 and 2 increases, the amount of current through the LED and therefore also its brightness decreases as well. So as you can see, we can easily use a potentiometer as a brightness control for a light emitting diode with a very simple setup. And by the way, the resistor of 440 ohms directly in front of the LED is there to ensure that it's never directly connected to the power source because in such a case the current would be simply too large and the LED would break very quickly. 
Now that was quite a lot of information about resistors. Let's quickly summarize the most important takeaways for you. Firstly, resistors reduce the potential energy of electrons, which is expressed in a drop in voltage across the resistor. And secondly, there are many applications and tasks for resistors, but the main function is to limit the current and to divide the voltage and also the current between certain areas of a circuit. And thirdly, resistors exist in many different designs, the most common being carbon layer resistors and also film resistors and in applications that require high power you can also find wire resistors with a metal cooling case to dissipate the heat. And next we have seen that the value of a resistor is often indicated by a color code to save space on the package and also the range of available resistance values is defined in a so-called E-series which is a standardized sequence of values with of electrical components and it's going to come back when we talk about capacitors. And lastly we can use a potentiometer to flexibly adjust current flow and voltage by simply turning a knob. In this video you have seen how resistors are structured, which types are available and also what the color codes and E-series are about. And when we start to develop the first simple circuits in future videos, it's important to know for you to what to look for when choosing resistors so you now have some basics which will help you with understanding more advanced concepts such as power ratings or temperature dependencies. And also you have seen what a potentiometer is, how it works and how it can be used to control the brightness of an LED. And because theory alone does not produce good engineers, we will take a look at some practical ways to determine the value of resistors in the upcoming tutorial. And if you like this kind of video here, please consider subscribing to my channel, which would certainly keep me motivated to continue making videos like this for you. And also you can download some of my learning materials, such as slides and circuit diagrams or simulation files on my website at thefearlessengineer.com. The link is coming up now here in the banner. So have fun and see you next time here on The Fearless Engineer.